Krasim Alda. And uh, today we are here uh, in uh, this seed session within the Natural Cities Festival because uh, we are very happy to have created this partnership with the Natural Cities Organization and uh, the network and to have the possibility to share uh, the work that we are doing within uh, one of our um, environmental projects, which is the Life Metro Adapt project, which is a project funded by the European Life Program and implemented under the coordination of the Metropolitan City of Milan, together with uh, uh, five partners that uh, are here today with us, Ambiente Italia, Egeos, Lega Ambiente Lombardia, CAP, and uh, ALDA. So I will uh, start by uh, sharing my, my screen and by giving you a very general introduction of, uh, of today's meeting. Please just tell me if you can see the presentation. You can, yes. I, I hope, yes, okay. So, here we go. Just some technical information that I'm sure that uh, all of us uh, are already very used to, to these uh, Zoom uh, webinars, but uh, of course I ask to the participants to keep the microphone switched off. And uh, of course uh, you can have the possibility to, to intervene and to speak, you can write in the chat questions for the speakers uh, and uh, uh, you can also raise your hand or tell us that uh, you you would like to intervene and we we will switch on your your microphone so uh, feel very free to write in the chat window whatever intervention you you want to make what are we going to do today a very quick presentation of the agenda so the workshop is uh, uh, titled Nature-Based Solutions as a Means to Boost Urban Climate okay. Adaptation. Sorry, I ask really to, to mute your microphone or maybe to, to my colleague to mute the, the microphone of the people who are going to enter. So uh, the, the title is Nature-Based Solutions as a Means to Boost the Urban Climate Change Adaptation. And we are going to start the discussion uh, with uh, the experience of uh, the, the Life Metro Adapt project. Uh, after a quick introduction, we are going to give the word to Marina Trentin from Ambiente Italia, who is going to talk to us about uh, nature-based solutions as uh, um, a mean to uh, increase urban resilience to climate change. Then uh, we will give the word to uh, Nicola Colanino, which is here in representation of the Metropolitan City of Milan. And the Metropolitan City of Milan is the coordinator of the Life Metro Adapt project. And uh, um, he will talk to us about uh, uh, the main objectives and results uh, uh, that we achieved so far by the project and specifically about uh, how it is possible to implement effective measures and strategies uh, from uh, in metropolitan areas to um, boost the urban climate change adaptation at the local level. Then we will uh, uh, have the intervention of Elena Francioni from Egeos. Uh, she will share with us the importance of uh, um, realizing a climatological analysis and providing data to public authorities in order to uh, really implement effective measures which are really um, adapted to the territories we are living in. So uh, she will uh, explain us how we can face this challenge. And then we will finally give the word to Eduardo Zanchini, Vice President of uh, Lega Ambiente. Uh, and he will uh, um, explain us uh, and talk to us about another challenge, how to boost uh, civil society participation and how to engage and raise awareness uh, about uh, this important topic of climate change adaptation and nature-based solutions, which can be a very technical issue uh, so uh, which are the, the methods and strategies that we can use uh, to uh, raise awareness among citizens engage, and, and engage them. And then uh, we will have uh, an um, exchange of experiences and group practices a session. Uh, so we will have a, a participatory session in the last 25 minutes of uh, today's seed session. Uh, starting from the experience of the Urbinat project, uh, we will invite all of you to share with us your work, your, um, your projects, uh, and also your vision 
about MDS, nature-based solutions, we will uh, have uh, a reflection around uh, the, the meaning of nature-based solutions and we will analyze uh, some of the challenges that we face uh, at the urban level to implement them, both from a social, political and also economic point of view. And then we will have the, the conclusion of, uh, of our session. So um, in order to um, realize the participatory session, we will send you a link in the chat to uh, the Miro, uh, so you can access uh, uh, this uh, board that we will use all together. You have two possibilities. You can access the board just as a viewer, or you can subscribe and access also having the possibility to edit the board while we are speaking. We will be taking notes anyway of all the interventions uh, and all the inputs that you, you are going to share with us. Uh, then, uh, um, as I was mentioning before, as ALDA and also as uh, uh, Life Metro Adapt project, we are very happy to be partnering with the Natural Cities Festival and we are organizing a lot of sessions in this week. There is a very rich program um, also for, for our project and here I just uh, summed up a bit uh, uh, the, what we are going to do in the next days. So today there's this um, first uh, and introductory seed session. Tomorrow we will have a sort of uh, a follow up of this session uh, at 10.15 at the same time. We will be having a virtual field trip to show you uh, the two uh, pilot nature-based solutions that uh, uh, within uh, the Live Metro Adapt project uh, we have uh, uh, implemented in uh, two municipalities in the metropolitan area of Milan. So if you want to see them with us and to have a, a small trip with us in Milan, you are very free to, to join and to, to subscribe to the virtual field trip. Then in the afternoon, in the plenary session, there will be a conversation between uh, uh, Alda Secretary General and Mary Rowe, which is the CEO of the Canadian Urban Institute about uh, participation, local democracy and sustainable cities. We warmly invite you to visit our uh, exhibitor booth that you can find here where we uploaded uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, interesting material about uh, the project and also to have a tour in the micro talks where we also have uh, some uh, uh, very quick talk about uh, the, the main topics of, of the project. Then if you visit our booth, um, we organized two uh, specific sessions that are uh, possible to access uh, through here, like join live uh, meeting room. And the sessions will be um, taking place uh, on uh, a Thursday at uh, 3.30 p.m. We will talk about the covenant of mayors and uh, the sustainable energy and climate action plan in metropolitan areas, uh, stressing out the important roles of uh, uh, metropolitan areas to use this uh, uh, important tool. Uh, at the local level. Uh, um, this workshop is in Italian only, unfortunately, but on the 26th of February, we will have uh, the final session talking about art and theater and uh, uh, having a, a talk with the director and actor about the importance of uh, uh, this um, tool, uh, theater, as, um, as a mean to really convey uh, important information to a wide uh, audience. So uh, we really invite you to, to follow us in these days. Just two words about ALDA and then I leave the word to our speakers. So as I said, I work with ALDA, which is one of the partners of the MetroDAP project, taking care of the dissemination and network creation. Because we are a huge network and a membership-based organization, uh, with the main objective of uh, uh, boosting local democracy and citizens' participation. So we have more than 350 members uh, in Europe in STEM partnership, and uh, uh, we are also going uh, global. So uh, if you want to keep in touch with us and with the project, uh, we invite you to leave us your email so that we can also strengthen our uh, network and create uh, synergies in, uh, in the future and future collaborations. Uh, so as I was saying before, we are part of a very wide network uh, at the European level and not only, and we are happy also to have uh, since this year with us the Nature of Cities organization and festival. Uh, we work with uh, a lot of thematics. Uh, one of the uh, main topics is environment and sustainability, and we are uh, currently implementing uh, a wide number of European uh, environmental projects. Uh, uh, one of these is the Life Metro Adapt project, and then we have 
a, a range of projects about uh, um, climate change adaptation, mitigation, flood risk, sustainable food consumption, sustainable mobility, biodiversity con uh, conservation, and, and so on. So um, I really invite you to uh, stay in touch. Uh, now we are going to send you in the chat uh, a link to leave us your email if you're interested in keeping in touch and following us also the social network and subscribing to the newsletter. So I'm very happy to um, give start official start to this session by leaving the word to uh, Marina. Um, so thank you. Hi, Marina. everyone. Yep. If I may directly uh, share my presentation, please just let me know if everything is okay, if you can see it quite well. Do you see it? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, first of all, thank you uh, very much uh, to Marta for this introduction and uh, uh, to Alda for this occasion to speak about uh, our project MetroAdapt. Uh, like MetroAdapt, uh, uh, in this uh, presentation will be presented also uh, as a way by which we can mainstream nature-based solutions in order to increase uh, uh, urban resilience to climate change. And in particular, we will see some examples and uh, um, we will have uh, uh, an idea on how we are working on this, uh, uh, on this purpose. Uh, my name is Marina Trentina. I work for uh, Ambient Italia, where I am a project manager um, on uh, adaptation issues. And uh, um, of course, I will be quite quick in order to leave a lot of space to the others, uh, to the other speakers. But of course, if there are uh, questions uh, uh, you may have uh, to, to ask, uh, you can write them and uh, we can also try to get answers also in a uh, postponed way. What are uh, nature-based solutions, first of all? So what are we talking about? We're talking about solutions to, uh, with multiple benefits to, com to complex problems, to complex uh, uh, challenges that are inspired by nature. Uh, they are supported, they are copied by nature, but uh, uh, the important thing is that they can answer to complex uh, systems uh, and they can give uh, multiple benefits uh, in support to, to local policies, uh, which are the challenges of uh, climate change, first of all. So uh, we need to understand what we are talking about and where we are uh, discussing. We have to localize a bit uh, what we are uh, doing against climate change. So in urban areas, most of all, uh, mainly in, metro in Milan metropolitan area, we have to really uh, great challenges induced by climate change, temperature raising, and uh, um, a different uh, distribution of precipitation that are more concentrated and more violent. Um, our answers uh, can be, of course, uh, we know it, uh, about mitigation. So stop or slow down the process of climate changing and adaptation. So uh, we can try to adapt and uh, our life, uh, our way of uh, conducting our life uh, and assure a good life quality for citizens despite climate change. Uh, so where are we uh, working? Um, what we will see is that we need to understand, if you want to mainstream the adaptation practices inside um, uh, inside the um, inside the governance, inside the land governance, uh, we need to understand quite well where we are uh, working. So we are working in uh, the Città Metropolitana di Milano, and uh, um, we have two typical climate change threats coming from uh, climate change, and are, that are uh, already existing, uh, but they are um, more enlarged and uh, more uh, acute by climate change. We have heat waves uh, with the effect of uh, urban heat islands. So we have very localized uh, uh, increase of temperatures and local floods. So we have difficulty in uh, uh, managing uh, runoff uh, and localized floods uh, when we have uh, this very um, short distributed uh, 
uh, and localized uh, events of precipitations. That's why we need uh, uh, shared actions uh, that uh, can uh, uh, have a governance that is common among all the local authorities. We need to coordinate local authorities and we need to be uh, part of this governance in order to can reach uh, and uh, uh, tackle this kind, of, uh, this kind of problems. Our opportunities to mainstream uh, this approach uh, were uh, inside uh, the, what we call Piano Territoriale Metropolitano, PTM. There is a um, management plan for the metropolitan area and uh, all the municipalities uh, planning tools. Metro Città Metropolitana di Milano is a uh, um, sort of um, high level uh, governance that is uh, supporting the coordination of land planning of uh, uh, many uh, municipalities. Uh, um, some of them very large, like Milan municipality, for example, some of them are really, really small. So we need to understand quite well which are the planning tools and which are the tools we have, uh, we can use. So we can work on local initiatives for adaptation and mitigation in order to um, understand uh, and analyze what's uh, happening in our territories. We need to uh, look for innovative, uh, solutions for adaptation to climate change. And uh, usually this is going in parallel with uh, uh, the development of green infrastructures in urban areas. And this is what we get with the use uh, and the promotion of uh, uh, natural-based solutions. And then uh, we can try to work uh, on public-private partnerships. This is um, why uh, we need to work uh, together with all the active actors uh, that are involved directly or indirectly in climate change adaptation. And this is, uh, a, and there are um, a good showcase uh, of scenarios uh, in Life Metro Adapt. So, which, uh, what does it mean to adapt through NDS? Um, we need to uh, more or less co design, co create, and co manage uh, common planning tools. For example, we need to um, reuse or renew areas and, uh, um, and buildings. We need to conserve nature and biodiversity. And we need to have multi-use and multi-purpose solutions in order to have multi-benefits. Um, we can divide them in three main uh, typologies of MBS, uh, um, green for uh, buildings for build environment, green for uh, spaces, for ground spaces, and uh, MBS uh, more specifically Police. for water management. Guarda All of them. Come conciato. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Um, this is more or less what we are talking about, and we will see that usually they are uh, they have uh, uh, multiple. Uh, uh, multiple purposes and usually they tackle more than just one problem per, or one threat per time. So we need to manage the urban drainage systems uh, and we can do this uh, um, in a very uh, different way. So we can uh, use uh, perme perme uh, more permeable pavements, uh, we can work on detention basins, we can try to work on bioretention systems or um, swallow systems or ponds and wetlands that can help us in uh, manage and uh, uh, slow down uh, the runoff. We can work, uh, as we've seen, uh, on uh, what we call uh, technical green, so uh, green built uh, on uh, buildings, uh, and we can have walls, green walls or green roofs, for example. Uh, some of them can have uh, multiple uses. Some of them can just be um, urban furnitures. Uh, uh, other can be uh, productive uh, uh, gardens or uh, can just be used for um, protecting uh, like the green barriers. Uh, usually you use, um, you can, uh, uh, have uh, um, uh, temperature regulation coming from this kind of uh, NDS, the same as uh, uh, the support that can be given by the ground, ground um, green spaces. Uh, both of them can so uh, regulate uh, 
uh, the water management, they can regulate and support temperature uh, regulation and uh, give, uh, uh, for example, social spaces, uh, social um, areas of uh, sharing uh, can give, uh, for example, um, food from urban farming and from community gardens uh, can simply be um, supported to the urban forestation for temperature control and runoff control. So uh, as you see, we have uh, different scales of application. Uh, that's why we need to mainstream it. We need to create uh, more than a tool in order to uh, put them at different level of governance. So we have, uh, we can, we can uh, span from the building uh, localized uh, dimension to the neighborhood, to the urban, to the peri-urban and rural area. So uh, what we call a metropolitan area, not just the urban level. Also, um, the time scale is uh, is quite uh, uh, is quite uh, wide. It has a wide range. For example, we can have actions, and yes, I can act uh, immediately. Other can act uh, at uh, medium terms or long terms. It depends on which is the answer we want to give to the threats we identify. If we want just to give a sort of uh, um, temperature management shelter to the citizens, we can work on living walls or localized green. But if you want to work more on a long-term adaptation plan, we can plan it between 20 to 50 years. That's why we created a catalog uh, within, um, within the uh, Life Metroada project. Uh, in which we have uh, many forms and many, um, many schemes in which we describe this MBS. And we try to give definition and short description of each one um, comprising the um, particular features like environmental impact and the socioeconomic benefits. So the multiple benefits that they can, uh, um, they can uh, product for us. Which had impact then uh, working more on what is the adaptation to uh, water regulation, water management. There is uh, maybe one of the biggest threats uh, um, on the long time and on the short time because it is uh, um, it is affecting uh, um, from the small scale to the wide scale, it is creating a lot of problems from economic point of view, not just quality of life. We can work uh, from, uh, we can span again from the simple rainfall infiltration and purification of the water that infiltrates. You can, uh, we can span then to the uh, retention and storage of water also for uh, giving back water to the water table. And uh, uh, we can also go to the air quality improvement and uh, the restoration of biodiversity, giving then uh, a big wide uh, representation of uh, multiple benefits. Um, we said we have uh, environmental impacts and then we have socioeconomic impacts that can be uh, not just aesthetic, uh, but can also support uh, the creation of social spaces, the um, enhancement of health and well-being uh, in citizen community, energy saving, of course, and uh, um, they can also support uh, the growth of local economics. That's why uh, we uh, are now showing you just a few of examples. We are superabundant. I'm not going to take uh, a lot of time because we already, I already consumed a lot of it. But I was just yes, uh, Marina, uh, going I, to show you. you. You have like, if you can close in two, two three minutes. Yep. Yes, I'm going to. So uh, as you can see, all of these examples I'm really, really going through are uh, offering support to the uh, good water to good uh, citizens uh, life quality they are supporting biodiversity they are supporting in this case also um, a good uh, uh, energy management for building we can give uh, uh, socializing places we can give gardens that support for example the production of food for um, uh, disadvantaged people for example you can work on microclimate uh, on building and outside building and uh, uh, again urban farming this is also a big social a big uh, um, sharing of uh, community uh, intents 
Um, and uh, this is also the creation of, this supports also the creation of small economy, um, economy enterprises uh, and not just giving places to share. That's why we need to, that's why we are pr promoting uh, the natural based solution uh, at the metropolitan level, because uh, as we see, if we can mainstream them in the governance uh, system uh, in the governance uh, um, coordination of a metropolitan area we can have uh, we can uh, enlarge the impacts and the um, multiple impacts uh, that uh, um, that the mbs can provide for climate change adaptation so i would just thank you and i hope to be in time now <laughs> bye Yes, thank you very much, Marina, for, for this overview and for sharing with us also what has been going on in, uh, in Milan and uh, the benefits of nature-based solutions we will going to reflect on also later. So now I leave the word to Nicola Colarino from uh, the Metropolitan City of Milan. Hi, hello. Good morning, everyone. I will share my screen also. Screen for screen mode, okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So let's start. Um, well, uh, my name is Nicola Colanino. Uh, actually, um, I'm a research fellow at Politecnico di Milano. But in this project, I work as a consultant for uh, some special parts, but also for supporting a um, uh, few, uh, few actions of the project. So um, here I will try uh, to give an overview of the project. Uh, I guess some information is going to overlap uh, with uh, Maria Trentin and Minute Italia and with uh, EJOS. Um, I will give just a few tips mostly in the part of uh, the analysis of Equate, because I also supported this part, but it was in charge of uh, GEOS, so they will, I guess they will explain very well from the technical point of view also this part. Um, so as I say, I have a few points here and I want to show you, but they are, they are maybe they are not, but I will try to stay in time because as I told you, some, some parts, um, for instance, in terms of NDS, you already had very, uh, very interesting and um, important overview of NDS from Italia. Uh, also, in terms of um, climate analysis. But here, in particular, we gave, um, let's say, the, for the, first, uh, the first part is kind of a uh, concept of project. And I will give some numbers in terms of special framework, which is the metropolitan area, which is the metropolitan area of Milan. Then, as uh, Marina already said, which are the main problems, the main um, climate climate change related problems the region, the metropolitan region is uh, taking to, to cope with uh, climate change and also which are the main objectives. So let's say um, here uh, uh, we have some objectives, um, already Marina told about them, so um, the project Metroada wants to um, to improve the mainstreaming of adaptation measures also um, want to promote um, a climate change governance. So this was a very important point. And um, addressing the two main problems that uh, the area is facing, the territorial area is facing, which are uh, flooding, uh, flooding related to um, heavy rainfall mainly, and uh, the urban island in, in periods of uh, heat waves. So um, one of the main action, main measures 
uh, the main solutions that uh, Città Metropolitana is providing in this, in this project are nature-based solution. On nature-based solution, you have very um, deep overview in the previous um, intervention. So now you know what MBS solution are. Also, I want to add that the catalog that you have seen in the previous presentation is available on the MetroAda platform. So it is a very uh, consistent work that you can download as a guide uh, about all the nature based solution that benefits how you can implement it in your territories. So here we have some other um, main um, objectives, which is uh, the improvement of uh, new uh, tools, uh, new rules also in the metropolitan plan which is a um, um, supra, supra municipal uh, instrument that can um, teach, that can, well, not teach, but can support the municipality in their local plans, local planning. So um, another uh, important point, as you have seen uh, in applying, in co-designing uh, a nature-based solution, is the enhancing the bottom-up initiative. So, um, trying uh, to raise uh, the awareness among citizens and also to improve the engagement of people uh, according to a bottom-up approach, which most of the time is uh, the co-designing of nature-based solution, the co-management of nature-based solution. Co-management also is very important part, part in this case. Mm, another uh, very uh, relevant point was the use of uh, satellite data. So uh, satellite-based remotely sensing data, which is kind of innovative part of this project. So all the analysis of um, uh, the hotspots, the hazards on the territory was made based on um, remotely sensed information. This information was key, was relevant for supporting the vulnerability analysis. So we we'll see uh, in a few slides what we are speaking about. Then we have, we have the next presentation. We will go more uh, deep in this uh, methodological approach. So um, the contributions of the project. Well, of course, I want to make work for the European metropolitan areas. So uh, promoting also this kind of approach, so uh, the possibility of replicating also the approach that was made in metropolitan area of Milan, also for other metropolitan area in Italy or uh, European, European, other European countries. Also, um, in the implementation of the covenant of measures, so supporting also the covenant of measures for climate and major of for climate and energy, and um, improving in um, ad adaptive, adaptive solution for uh, facing uh, challenging in terms of water, energy, construction sector, and um, the improvement of green infrastructure. So uh, there are some lot of important outputs of this project. We will see most uh, deep um, in the last part. One of the most important tools that was improved was an interactive web GIS that can uh, be seen as supporting tool for uh, decisions for uh, local uh, policy makers. So we have also uh, two uh, pilot projects that were made in uh, two municipalities in the metropolitan of Milan, made by Cap, uh, Capoldi. So we'll see also in with few details these two uh, pilot projects. Well, this here, here we have a framework, but I will not uh, dedicate a lot of time because we have the presentation available. So uh, we know um, that we have these problems in terms of uh, temperature, in terms of water. You have here some details. We also know that uh, the European Union is promoting a European strategy on climate change. And uh, following the European strategy on climate change, also in Italy, um, the government is uh, launching the national strategy on adaptation to climate change, the SNAP, which was launched in 2014. 
and um, you can have some information. I, I like also to put some links in the presentation. So if you go, if you're interested in uh, um, national strategy of adaptation, you have the link here, down here. So if you want more, if you want more details, uh, the presentation will be, uh, I think, I hope so, uh, will be useful. So in line with the work that you have seen uh, by Ambiente Italia, the SNAC, which is the national strategy, also promote tools uh, which are the identified as soft green gray measures. So as you, have, as you have seen before, you have blue, you have green actions also in terms of MBS. Based on the national strategy, also the Lombardy region um, developed its own regional adaptation strategy, 2013-14, was adopted in 2016. Uh, you have some details here. If you want to go deeper in the, in the, in the, in the laws that promoted these strategies. Um, also, it was very important in 2017, it was launched the, uh, the, um, the, the regional regulation regarding how the hydraulic and hydrological invariants in uh, the region. This was useful for identifying those areas where uh, possible to implement sustainable urban drainage systems. Uh, sustainable urban drainage systems was uh, the topic of the two pilots, as we will see uh, in the next slides. So here we have the special framework. Um, well, I think you already know about um, the, the Metropolitan Area of Milan. I don't want to dedicate a lot of time here. Here we have some numbers. Basically, the Metropolitan Area of Milan is uh, made by 134 uh, municipalities, including the city of Milan. So these tools are supporting all these municipalities, which are, which are quite, quite a lot. In terms of population, we have around 3 million of population, and we have very high density. Here we have 2,000 uh, inhabitants per square kilometers also. And as you can see, uh, well, we can see that it's very important um, urban environment in the region Lombardia is the most uh, dense in terms of population. So uh, also a quite, quite a lot affected by climate, uh, by climate issues as uh, Adelaide, for instance. Mm, well, here um, some more details about the numbers. And yeah, you have already seen, which is the difference, you know, of course, you know the difference among mitigation and adaptation measures. So in here, in this project, we are addressing adaptation mostly. And uh, which are the measures, which are the objective of the measures in terms of adaptation. So increase the resilience, for instance, in the management of scarce resources and also improve welfare conditions which are the area of intervention. So we can intervene on building and urban design, we can intervene on infrastructure, on territory and nature, and also, which is very important and relevant, uh, the involvement of citizens. So um, we have basically the project uh, was based on different tools, which was the vulnerability assessment, the um, promotion of guidelines and uh, the training. Training was very relevant part of the project. So in terms of vulnerability, uh, you will see uh, all the, the analysis which was made by JOS on vulnerability based starting from satellite data, starting from uh, the database, topographic database of region, region, Lombardia region, um, the data from the National Institute of Statistics, which was which were combined for providing vulnerability and risk maps. We also have guidelines. Uh, we have a number of guidelines depending on the topic. You can find all this data on the Metro Adapt portal. We will see at the end. Training. We already gave uh, some extra cathedral lessons um, to uh, municipalities, to the uh, internal, to metropolitan city of Milan, and also to uh, professional orders. Here we are. We have the two uh, main hazards that we are facing with, uh, by uh, Metro Ada project. So uh, urban Italian fluids, as you can, as you have seen before which are the impact, of course. It's important because we have impact on living, working, and moving. So it is very urgent to face uh, these issues. 
Also, uh, last but not least, we have a lack of coordination. So by the implementation of the Metropolitan Plan, the main objective which Metropolitan Area of Milan is addressing is the coordination, trying to make coordination um, actions among the municipalities. These are the, the actions. Uh, there are eight actions. The first three, I, I think you, you already know this scheme, but it's quite interesting. It's very well done because you can see that C1, 2, 3, they are connected among them. And the output of this um, first three actions are useful for uh, C4 and C5. Then we have monitoring, you have communication, and you have uh, the project management. Nicola, so I sorry, I, I asked to, to, to close like in two minutes, if you can. Yeah, yeah, we go quite fast because yeah, yeah you- great. Uh, thank you, you very yeah. much, sorry. Here we have, yeah, don't worry. We, here we have the two other, uh, so temperature. I will go fast because you will see AJOS will give you a very deep uh, tips on it. Also another part was analyzing um, the, um, the potential runoff. It was a methodology based on, on uh, the curve number. You have, you can find more details about this, about it. And basically it works with land cover, land use and hydrological soil groups. So uh, we analyzed two events, one uh, critical day and an average, an annual average of uh, precipitation. And we found this map that we found, we, we call them map of attention. Here you have a zoom in the millimeters of um, infiltrated water. And yeah, let, let's go uh, fast. And this map was useful for understanding which are the area where it is more, it is more urgent to improve, uh, to implement sustainable urban drainage. Here you have the two uh, case study, the two pilots, which are already um, uh, in work. So in the city of Solaro and the city of Masate, you can see two, um, how to say, very uh, local interventions. You can find more, uh, more data on the same um, Metro, Adapt Metro Adapt platform. It was made by CAP. And um, yeah, we also have a part. We are working on the monitoring, which will be on short term and long term at um, two different special levels, territorial and local level. Well, uh, just for closing, I want to show you um, the Metro Adapt platform. You have all the links here, so you can go directly on the Metro Adapt platform. And one of the most important thing is the interactive platform. I will show you quite, quite fast. If you click on here, you will go to the platform. I think just one minute to show it because it, I think it's very uh, useful. And let me see here, you have the platform. So by default, uh, you can navigate along, uh, across the thermical, uh, thermal anomalies. So you have here an interactive uh, web GIS. So you have thermal anomalies here. You have in thermal anomalies, you also find you have the possibility of analyzing sensible population. You also have the risk index, which is combining thermal anomalies and sensible population. And you also have potential runoff. And finally, you have some events some critical events in terms of heavy rainfall. This is very important because it's an instrument for supporting decisions at the local level. So municipalities can use this tool for deciding, for managing the territory and for addressing these, uh, these issues. Yeah, um, sorry for, for Thank being you, a bit long. No, it, yeah, was, it, it was worth it, I, I think, because it's, uh, it's very interesting and now, uh, we, we are going to leave uh, the floor to Elena Francioni from Egeo, who will go a bit deeper also in the, um, in the field of climatological analysis. 
So thank you very much, Nicola, for your contribution. And uh, I invite Thanks to you. I invite all of you to, if you have questions or if you want to to know more about something, you just write in the chat and uh, we will, we will uh, give an answer. Elena, the floor is yours. Okay. May you please confirm uh, that you that yes, you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, so, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to present what we have, what we have uh, uh, realized during the MetroAdapt uh, project uh, concerning uh, urban heat maps. Um, first of all, a very quick introduction to, to the company I work for, uh, IGEOS, that is a joint venture between uh, uh, Telespazio and Italian Space Agency. Uh, Telespazio is part of the Leonardo family. And we work worldwide in the geoinformation context. Uh, we were born for the commercialization of Cosmos SkyMed, uh, a radar satellite constellation, um, so for Cosmos SkyMed data. Uh, so coming to, to the topic, urban it island. Uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce the topic. Uh, so we are talking about uh, urban context, clearly, and we are talking about uh, those uh, very dangerous uh, situations happening during uh, heat waves. Uh, so also uh, related to climate change phenomena, uh, we have some period during the year in which uh, temperature rise a lot. Uh, all over the world, but mostly over the cities. Um, due to the high urbanization of our, of our cities, uh, the, there is this uh, phenomenon of uh, urban heat islands. What does it mean? That due to the fact that the buildings are very close one to, one to the other, and so there is a very um, low possibility for air to uh, circulate between uh, buildings, um, the, the temperature tends to uh, remain very high also during the night in some areas of the cities. And this is very dangerous for population, especially for people uh, in, the, in the age of higher than 70 years and lower than 10 years. And so uh, we are looking to, uh, it is possible to find solution, it is possible to mitigate this phenomena, but the first things to understand is uh, where are the, these areas, where these islands uh, are forming uh, in our cities. And this is exactly the work that has been done within the mm, Life Metro Adapt project by EGEOS. So, as I said, we use the satellite data. Satellite data has a, a very um, plus with respect to the sensor and site. First, they provide a synoptic vision of the territory. So with just, with a, just one image, it is possible to cover a very, and to analyze a very wide area over our cities. Then they are able to provide information at different scales. Uh, this is due to the fact that we have uh, different satellites in orbit. And, and moreover, uh, it is possible to integrate this information with data and information coming from uh, the Earth, uh, from the terrain. Uh, this is because uh, um, satellite data are completely independent with respect to other source of data and of analysis. And so this make, uh, this make possible to integrate this information with other kind of sources. Uh, let's uh, let's move uh, to to what we have done. So we started from the analyze of satellite data in order to create the uh, to to extract the information of the hazard to uh, so to um, identify which are the areas in which there is a higher risk of having a high temperature over the night. Then the the second ingredient of our work has been to understand the context. So to understand uh, the situation in the city where people, uh, where there is a, a people that may be subjected to health, to health problem in the city uh, in order to have a sort of map of the situation that we are looking to. Putting, uh, so mixing together this hazard and vulnerability index, we uh, derived the risk index for population. We concentrated our uh, effort uh, in, um, in uh, correlation with uh, P 
people age. So uh, as I mentioned before, a population over 70 and under 10 years old. Uh, but we may uh, go, go more deeper uh, if we want into the analysis, also adding information related, for example, to economic situation of a certain area. Uh, why? Because uh, if there is a very healthy neighborhood, you may probably have uh, uh, conditioning inside uh, inside apartments. So probably there is a self-mitigating action by population. But if you are in poor, poorer uh, areas in a city, maybe you do not have this kind of uh, um, this kind of solution within your apartment. So, uh, as I mentioned, we use the satellite data for uh, this first, uh, um, for the realization of this uh, hazard map. We used in particular nighttime acquisition derived by Landsat 8 satellite and uh, Aquaterra uh, and Terra satellite equipped with the MODIS uh, sensor. Uh, why acquisition over the night? Because during the day uh, you have a uh, hot, you have a uh, uh, the, the whole city is uh, as a high temperature, but what we want to identify are the situations in which there is a retention of this heat over the city. So we prefer to use a nighttime acquisition where uh, the temperature is supposed to slow down. Then we mixed this analysis with the local and historical data. What kind of, of data? Uh, Nicola has already mentioned this. We used the topographic database in order to understand the urban context, how buildings are realized, how they are located in the city in order to understand if there is a space, if there is room for air to circulate and also thematic maps and other territorial index derived by the census, census uh, data to understand where population is located and the, the age of the population in the different area of the city. This is the first result of the analysis, or better, this is uh, the first ingredient, as I mentioned, the hazard. So this is a map of the land thermal anomaly. So what does it mean? That with the satellite, we measure the temperature on the surface and we derive this, uh, uh, this map. But the map represents an anom the anomaly uh, of temperature in the city with respect to the surrounding, assuming that the surrounding has a, let me say, natural uh, decrease of temperature over the time, uh, over the night. Uh, this is the analysis uh, um, perform, um, realized for uh, the city of Milan, but the, the same analysis has been done uh, over the whole metropolitan area of Milan. Then, as I mentioned, we used uh, the second kind of data, so the one coming from uh, the terrain, so the information coming from databases, uh, local databases uh, and population uh, information, to generate this uh, sensitive population map. So in order to create a vulner vulnerability index, analyzing where, um, where is concentrated the most part of population uh, that may be subjected to health uh, problems related to the high temperature over the night. And this is the final result. So the cake, if we want to, pursue this, uh, this metaphor of, uh, of the cooking, uh, cooking receipt. Um, so this is uh, uh, the risk index over the city of Milan. The darker areas are the represent the situation where you have a high temperature and uh, uh, population is mostly in the two, um, in the two uh, areas that uh, we have mentioned, so over 70 and under 10. Uh, what does it mean that in this area there, there can be problems or over the night? Um, it, it also means that probably in, in this area that there will be a higher energy consumption if uh, all people there as uh, um, have a, a, an air conditioning system within their apartment. So uh, it's for sure uh, an issue, a topic related to 
healthcare, but it is also something related to energy management. Um, and both uh, uh, information provided together are very useful in terms of uh, replanning our cities uh, with uh, um, a view on sustainability of our cities. As I mentioned, the, the same analysis has been done not only over the, the, the city of Milan, but all over the metropolitan city of Milan. So, in or, so we analyzed the situation for more than 100 mun, uh, smaller municipalities. This is a very precious information, clearly. Um, consider that uh, um, you have, uh, you have, we have also uh, rescaled the analysis. I mean, now you that you see the overall analysis, uh, you see clearly that in Milan there are many areas, darker areas, um, that probably are uh, uh, with a higher temperature over the night with respect to the whole metropolitan city of Milan, but. Uh, uh, this doesn't mean that uh, the rest uh, of the metropolitan cities has no problem. If you focus just on the singular, on the single municipality, you can find uh, several uh, urban Thailand that that, that uh, need probably some mitigation action. And mitigation action was exactly the purpose, uh, the definition of uh, the, the, the mitigation uh, um, action to. Uh, to, to perform was exactly the purpose of this product. So this analysis has been used in order to plan this kind of activity. Just for uh, moving uh, uh, to, to the closure, we then uh, uh, we developed at Geos uh, a, a portal for uh, requesting uh, uh, this kind of service that we, we really, we strongly believe is a promising service in terms of sustainability of our cities. And so it is possible to request this kind of analysis through our, uh, our system. Um, and then uh, just to provide you some other, inf some other pills of what satellite can do for our cities in terms of improving efficiency and improving their sustainability, um, I have prepared a very uh, quick overview of some products. Uh, let me start with the water leaks detection that can be done with uh, uh, radar data and the aimed at uh, identify uh, underground leaks, uh, thanks to the fact that the radar signal can penetrate into the underground, uh, and so support uh, a proper management of water that is a very precious resource uh, that we have uh, and uh, that we um, that we use, uh, let me say, to underestimate in terms of value, because uh, we we live in the in the in the in the lucky side of the world in which uh, we think we have a lot of water available, uh, but it is not so true. Uh, then uh, we can support the management of uh, uh, the urban evolution, um, supporting uh, planning and uh, avoiding uh, and uh, fighting uh, abusivism and uh, illicit uh, activities that may compromise uh, infrastructure, uh, stabilities, uh, and in general, the the, the urban environment. It is possible to provide very highly detailed deformation analysis, uh, providing uh, measurements, millimetric deformation of buildings, infrastructure, um, terrain, in order to prevent uh, uh, them to prevent collapses or uh, uh, measure landslides. And clearly, it is possible to support, uh, in general, uh, city planning uh, by providing updated cartography and uh, mixing, again, this information with uh, information coming from the territory in order to um, analyze the impact of new building, new construction over the population. And at the same time, it is possible to support uh, during uh, um, emergencies and during a critical situation, providing uh, emergency mapping service and support uh, to, um, to city protection. And I think this was the very last slide. So I thank you for uh, your attention, and we will be available at the end for uh, questions.
Thank you very much, Elena, for this very interesting presentation and for showing us how climatological analysis and data are essential to, um, to, to actually implement effective measures at the local level. So you, you have underlined two of the main problems of the metropolitan area of Milan, which are flood risk and the urban heat islands, specifically the second one. So later on, we will see how we can face these two problems also with um, uh, the implementation of natural-based solutions. And now I leave the word to um, Edoardo Zanchini from Lega Ambiente, Vice President of Lega Ambiente, Lombardi, eh, no, Lega Ambiente National. <laughs> so the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello to everyone. I will share the screen. Tell me if you can see it. Can you see the presentation now? Not yet. We cannot oh. see it. Sorry. Let's see. Okay. Yes, Let's now yes. In. Now we can see your screen. Okay. Yeah. No, um, mine is it's, it's, it's the final uh, contributor of this morning, and uh, I will speak about uh, what Lega Ambiente is doing on a national level and even on a regional level with uh, the participation in the Metro Adapt um, project um, in the way in which uh, an NGO can contribute um, in uh, uh, so huge issues like uh, climate change and human sustainability. And um, what we're doing is working on obviously on uh, awareness of people on uh, the relevance of this this issue through new tools that we think are very important to let people understand uh, the impacts that are uh, moving forward uh, of climate change in uh, the italian territory um, we um, created this website um, in which we have the opportunity to map uh, the impacts of um, flooding, of uh, um, huge rain, and um, of uh, uh, tornadoes, of hailstorm, um, and uh, in this way, we try to help people understand inside this huge information that we have uh, through media, website, and uh, social uh, me social media about uh, the what is happening in the in the weather every day and every hour uh, trying to let people understand what are the damages that already we can see in the territories and uh, so the, through this website and through this mapping uh, people can understand what is going uh, forward and um, we have this mapping that is going on through 10 years and so uh, in this way we understand even which are the areas that suffer for more uh, these uh, impacts and um, even try to understand the differences between the different territories of Italy in the impacts of um, of uh, uh, flooding or uh, hailstorm or even heat waves uh, and try to understand in this way how uh, at local level we have to deal with this kind of uh, problems and trying even to uh, improve the local policies and even the national policies. Uh, this web, uh, this website, it's it was created in um, to be interactive, and so uh, people can uh, understand about uh, more about their where they live and what is happening and uh, what happened in the past ten years, and even what happened in the past, in order to understand even where are the areas in which you could risk more. Um, when there is uh, a huge rain that is coming and uh, um, and uh, uh, you have a problem of uh, you know that there will be a change in the weather and um, it's a way even to involve our local groups uh, like ambiente local groups that can contribute through photos analysis research so if you go on the website you understand and you know you can know more about uh, what happened in the different parts like this of rome and so you even can understand the differences between the, the areas of rome and what happened in the in the past and um, and even we um, create spaces for contribution and even analysis made from our local groups like in Carrara there is a, there have been in the past in um, huge problems of um, overflooding 
and um, what has been made by the local municipality um, doesn't convince our local groups and so we give space to this kind of um, scientific insights uh, in order to um, show that even um, from uh, an NGO or from local groups can uh, arrive a contributing understanding and even in um, mm -hmm and even in choosing the right policies at the uh, local level. We organize even annual reports and publications about different topics uh, linked to the impacts of um, climate change and uh, um, flooding and uh, tornadoes and hailstorm um, in order to uh, understand what happened and where, uh, in order even to show uh, where there have been more impacts, and even to understand uh, which are the priorities. Um, in Italy, we don't have a national adaptation plan. We are the only. We are now the only big um, European state that still doesn't have a national adaptation plan. And our aim and the reason of this work is even to uh, let the government understand that we really need this plan because we have to deal with new problems and uh, we have to have clear ideas about where are the priorities in order to um, adapt uh, to have a um, uh, to move forward in the adaptation of the different territories uh, we even promote scientific research and collaboration uh, what uh, lena franciosi showed you before um, is um, an analysis that um, had his that had the first um, the first draft uh, in 2017 uh, with um, an, a study made on Milan by Igeos for Legambiente in which we had this first um, showing of uh, the risk that you have in um, for heat waves and uh, uh, most of all on in night temperatures um, in in the different areas of Milan and even the risk for older population. Obviously, she showed uh, more recent studies and more even interesting and. Um, more uh, wider uh, analysis but the reason why we did this analysis that had a, um, a big success in in media is that we our aim is to uh, let everyone understand that we have a problem we have to deal with the, there is an increasing in temperatures in uh, all the big cities in italy because of uh, um, the, the changes that have been play, made in urban planning and uh, and uh, in soils, and even due to the higher temperature uh, the, um, related to climate change. And we have to deal with this problem. We have to analyze where there are more risks for uh, the older population and even the poorer population. And so um, this is the reason why we made this study and the reason why we are happy about the method of project and the possibility that um, we have to know more uh, about Milan through this project. And even now, what we hope is that there will be even some choices in um, urban planning to avoid this, uh, these impacts. And uh, obviously we work on um, trying to widespread the good practices that are moving forward in Italy and um, in Europe and in all the world, uh, choosing some main topics, the ones that are on public spaces and squares, uh, adaptation plans, measures um, against um, flooding, and even um, local regulation that goes in a direction of adaptation to to climate change and um, we even are involved this is um, linked to the issue of uh, natural based solutions we are even involved in, as legambiente in different naturalistic and even social recovery projects financed through sponsorship throughout italy these are projects that have been made in Pantelleria, that is an island in the south of Italy, in Puglia, in uh, Campania, and uh, even in projects on um, uh, reforesting and in and, um, new, new forest uh, to be uh, brought in different cities. And we do this kind of projects with uh, partnerships 
with uh, companies and sponsorships. And uh, obviously, you already know about the uh, Medro Ada project and the role that Lega Ambiente Lombardia has in, uh, in the communication and the increasing awareness on the, the, the issues of adaptation to climate change, even in a original and interesting uh, way through uh, even theaters, through, um, through uh, workshops on uh, specific issues, through uh, widespread uh, information about uh, the change that is going on on, um, uh, on on climate, but even the opportunities that we have to understand more about how our territory works and uh, what we listened before, it's very interesting uh, and shows how we can really, um, we really have the opportunity to um, use new technologies in order to uh, change even the way we uh, carry on um, local policies in a more efficient way. And obviously we are an environmental NGO and so we have even a campaign on um, awareness, but even on involvement of citizens in um, pushing uh, forward the, the fight, <laughs> uh, political and social, uh, against climate change to have um, tougher decision, more ambitious decision at national, European, world level, but even a local level uh, to fight climate change. And uh, obviously, you can find all the information about this national campaign on our Lega Ambiente website. Uh, I hope that I stayed in the time that you um, that you gave me. If you want more information, these are the two websites in which we uh, have all the information about what I show you, uh, what I showed you. Obviously, you have more information about what Lega Ambiente Lombardia is doing in the Metro Adapt project in the Metro Adapt uh, website. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Yes, you definitely stay in time. It was very, very interesting. And we have a question about uh, uh, Città Clima. Um, if it is just in, in Italian or uh, if there is also a version available in English, because I think that it's a very good tool. So th there's a lot of interest. <laughs> Sorry, but we have it only in Italian, the website, but as there is an increasing interest on the on the work that we are doing, we will try to have at least an extra report, even in English, and uh, even to change the website for the future to have it even in English. Yeah, that's great. It was uh, really interesting to see, like, which are also some innovative tools uh, that uh, you don't see so often uh, to raise awareness and also to actually really engage citizens in, um, in this thematic. So thank you very much for the inspiring presentation. And now, um, well, I hope that uh, we haven't lost so many participants now. We are quite a lot. Uh, so we can start the participatory session. Um, I, um, we sent you the link to Miro in, in the chat. So if you want, you can open it and uh, see a bit what we are doing there. And uh, I will also uh, share, share the screen. And I will leave the word to uh, Gonzalo uh, Canto that I thank to be here with us today from the Urban Art Project. He, he accepted to share uh, some information and some knowledge about the project and about its work in the university about nature-based solution. And uh, it will guide the reflection about, uh, about it in today's session. So what we thought about was to also ask you, uh, what do you think about uh, um, nature-based solutions? And also, uh, what do you think are the challenges in terms of uh, uh, social engagement, but also in terms of uh, uh, the role of the, the public sector in uh, um, making this tool effective? And uh, uh, we also want to know if you uh, have some good practices in your territory that you want to share with us about this. So I leave the, um, the floor to Gonzalo. Uh, Gonzalo, do you want me to share the screen or you, you will share yours? You have your microphone switched off. Uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Marta, for the presentation and for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, I think it's better for me to share the screen yes. because I, I will uh, zoom in and zoom out with the Miro. Uh, yes. Although everyone can participate, it's a very friendly tool. Uh, and uh, I hope it will work uh, as usual. Uh, it's uh, I not, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the, with this, but uh, it's a it's a good opportunity to to share uh, some ideas um, 
and to collaborate in in um, in a uh, in building up some 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 knowledge uh, that uh, we we are uh, developing together so um, the problem with the mirror is that you have to be careful otherwise you <laughs> you move the um, the the background of the of the Im image i think someone yeah, maybe did it's just it. a tip uh, for for the participants that i recently discovered using mirror that if you click on gonzalo face on the top you can see what he sees. So uh, you, you will uh, follow him without uh, having to move uh, too much around. So it's, uh, it's quite easy. Mm -hmm. So the, someone moved here the, the back side. Let me... <laughs> okay, I think we can do it like this. Okay. So uh, first of all, we, we have here, um, Four, four main uh, questions to 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 engage all of you in the in the discussion. Uh, what we what we thought is that I could introduce a little bit the the topics of uh, Urbinat project um, uh, uh, related with this question. So it will be a way of uh, in some way involving you uh, in the question. And I will ask you that uh, while I'm 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 speaking, if you if you want also already to put some notes in these pink, blue, and and uh, yellow cards. You are free to do it. Otherwise, we can do it after uh, after my my talk. Um, so my my uh, uh, the the project that I coordinate uh, uh, is Urbinat, urban, innovative, and inclusive nature, and we are uh, uh, co-creating uh, with the citizens. Uh, what we call the healthy corridor so that is a cluster of nbs uh, in social housing neighborhoods uh, um, in seven european cities so we are working in porto nantes sofia uh, odstastrup in, in denmark brussels siena in italy that i know most most of you are from italy uh, and nova gorizia that is also in the border of the of italy uh, in in slovenia uh, so what we, we are addressing uh, here to 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 discuss the, the first uh, main challenge on on what are the the challenges for NBS, uh, we would like to expand uh, in some way the the concept of NBS that uh, Marina already uh, defined very well in her presentation, and I'd like to thank also Marina was with us I think for almost two years. Um, uh, and we would like to expand this concept of NBS, uh, and we would like to bring, for one side, the, the material solutions that are most of the time are, are the ones that we uh, put the focus on, but also uh, the immaterial one uh, more related with process and services. So uh, in some way related to, to some of the concerns that were here already discussed, the idea of NBS as a human-centered approach. So we have here, for instance, some, some examples of our NBS catalog that you can visit in our website. So you have here the link for the website. And, and we try to identify four typologies of NBS, uh, the territorial ones um, uh, that are the most common ones. Uh, let's say, for instance, I have here a, a, wild, uh, a wild garden, uh, but uh, also the technological ones that are developed with uh, um, uh, with high technological uh, uh, um, uh, solutions that in some way uh, bring, for instance, the digital ones, uh, uh, the hydroponic ones, uh, and that some, sometimes it's, it's very important also to bring this knowledge to, to the cities, but also what we call the, 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 the social economic ones and the participatory ones more related with this process and services. And, and, and for us, this understanding is very important to expand this concept of, of the nature-based solution and to engage the citizens uh, uh, in, this, in, this, uh, um, in these solutions for the cities, as, as we already saw in the last presentations, the importance of changing the behavior of the, of the cities and also to create awareness uh, while you participate in these uh, uh, activities to build up together solutions, uh, you are already changed the way you understand the reality and you understand the way you use your city. 
So although we have, of course, environmental challenges uh, also in the cities that we work, uh, for instance, one interesting thing is that we work in, in the peripheral areas of the cities, where, and these areas are usually very green. But uh, although they are green, the green is not used. So they are green because they, they were built in rural areas, in, in previous rural areas, but people don't use the green areas. So uh, there is an environmental opportunity, let's say, here. But there is also health and well-being challenges. We know that most of these peripheral areas, they are uh, uh, also uh, areas with a lot of social inequalities. And here is an opportunity to change the, the behavior and to give uh, 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 more quality of the public space and the environment for the people. So more than why, it's important the how in order to involve citizens and stakeholders. Uh, and this is the link for the second uh, uh, topic, I would say, that is how can citizens be better engaged in the social, in the social dimension of NBS? So what we, what we thought is that um, citizens need and want to play an active role. So, uh, uh, and this is very important. So we have, we, in our citizens, cities, in our cities, citizens are uh, educated people that want to participate in, 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 the, in the transformation, in the regeneration of their cities. So we, we, we would like to involve them in the co-creation of NBS uh, as a top-down initiative, but Mostly, we want to implement living labs so that these uh, NBS uh, solutions are co-created from the bottom, from the civic uh, initiatives. Um, so we, we, we challenge to, to involve, to create inclusive process with all the target groups related to age, gender, and specificities. And one of the, one of the uh, main challenges that we see in this involvement is the relation with the municipality. So to develop co-governance uh, 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 solutions and, and initiatives that uh, allow a, an interaction between the different groups and the municipalities to work together on the future of the cities. So we, we implement, for instance, a municipal roadmap that you can find in our website, where all the, all the different groups work together uh, to, to, to co-create the solutions to, to, and also to, to, to monitor and to take care of the solutions in the future. So for this, it's very important to involve them in the decision-making process. And this is a big challenge uh, in the cities. Uh, um, in the city. So uh, uh, we, we, we established this circular uh, scheme where we try to put in dialogue the community residents, the municipality, the local organizations, um, and uh, as well as the companies, and also the champions, the, the ones that are uh, leaders in the city, in the, in the communities that uh, can be uh, key persons to uh, activate this dialogue between these four groups that many times they, they are very active in their cities, in their communities, but many times they don't work together. So the big role here is to involve them in this uh, uh, co-creation of NBS. For that, we establish a process that we, uh, it's our Urbinat co-creation process, let's say, that goes from the diagnostic and we saw here uh, the importance of the diagnostic uh, in the last presentations to know the territory and, and the challenges of the territory, but it's very important to do it together with the citizens and, and with the local actors in the field. So we know that uh, all, the, all the cities have today a huge uh, uh, social uh, uh, network that has a, a, a very important knowledge on the area, so we need to involve them on this diagnostic. Um, then the co-design, it's a big challenge to design together uh, and, and for the, the uh, we saw here, for instance, solutions related with training. Uh, it's very important to train our professionals, our planners uh, to do things in another way because uh, 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 we need to share our knowledge with the citizens. And of course, the implementation of these solutions together with the citizens as well as monitoring so that we have the conscience that we are doing things well or that we need to address uh, more challenges. So the, the, the third question, um, uh, some, some of the good practice uh, related to the NBS. So in, in our project, uh, I will give the example of Portugal, Porto in, in, 
in our neighborhood of Campagna in the in the east part, uh, 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 um, an area with uh, a lot of uh, challenge. And we have, for instance, a, a urban farm that has a lot of success in this social housing neighborhood. But we want to expand this concept. Uh, we want the, this together with the citizens, of course, it's not it's not the ideas of the project. The, what the cities want is to expand this and relate this urban farm with a community management, because it's very difficult to uh, uh, change the idea that uh, these, these urban farms are, are uh, managed by individuals and, and not by the community. Uh, they, they also ask uh, uh, for a community chicken kitchen where, uh, sorry, a, a community a communitary kitchen where, uh, um, uh, where they, they can do uh, meals together, and, and this is very important to create the community-based uh, uh, approach to these initiatives. Also a solidarity market where they can exchange the products that came from the, the urban farm, uh, and also to create a, a cultural dynamic around this. So we see how this, uh, uh, starting with, with the urban farm, we can uh, arrive to a, a set of solutions that work together uh, to create this community uh, dimension. Uh, I must say that, for instance, I, I was in Siena uh, in one of our cities uh, and uh, there is, uh, they are doing uh, amazing work on these uh, transversal dimensions of the urban farm, uh, uh, namely relating the urban farm with cultural events, which is quite an important initiative. Uh, and we try to build together these solutions. For instance, during the pandemic, we used a lot Miro. Uh, this is one of the, our last uh, uh, work with the, with the, the community, uh, trying to work together uh, with the schemes of, of, uh, uh, of developing the, the solutions together. And uh, here we worked uh, on, on, uh, on the solidarity market, on the open air amphitheater, and on the community uh, urban farm. Uh, and we arrive, for instance, here is one of the uh, of the drawings that we arrive together of what could be this uh, um, solidarity market uh, by renovating a, a old uh, uh, a old building uh, that could be the the physical support for this uh, uh, for this environment. Um, and uh, the last topic that is the the. Uh, what, which are the most effective climate change adaptation policies implemented in your territory. Uh, I would like to, to conclude with some ideas from, from Urbinat, uh, that uh, this idea that uh, it's important the climate change, but also the social change. Uh, I think they are together. Uh, and I think in some way, the, the last presentation of Eduardo point out is very clear how the, the civic uh, uh, society can, can collaborate and can be engaged in this uh, big challenge of the, of the climate change. So I would say that uh, these are the small steps that we can do together. Uh, of course, the secular strategies are uh, uh, fundamental to, to, for this change of behavior. Uh, the urban agriculture is also a, an important tool because it brings, uh, uh, it address a lot of challenges, the, the green areas, the change on food behavior, uh, a healthy life, uh, and also, of course, the training, but also the environmental education. Uh, the adaptive reuse, it's, it's essential. We have a lot of housing stock and building stock that we need to uh, reuse and we need to, to do it in another way. Uh, and of course, to create also, uh, uh, we are trying to implement in our cities, a stakeholders advisory board so that citizens are more close to the decision-making process in the municipality. So this is a little bit uh, what we call the, our healthy corridor, uh, a, a green structure that has this social uh, involvement of the citizens uh, in building together a, a better city uh, for, for, for all of us. So this is a little bit the, the topics that I thought could be in some way, uh, bring some ideas for the, for the discussion. Uh, and now maybe we can go uh, uh, through 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 the questions, and I see that you are al already um, uh, working together on these on these questions. So if you have also some some doubts about Urbinat, we can do it no, now in a more uh, informal way. So for the first question, what are the main challenges related to NBS in your territory? 
um, I, I don't know if we have here some comments. Uh, do you if want someone to... Someone wants also to open the microphone and like just intervene, you're welcome to. Yes. If not, maybe Gonzalo can read through the comments, but please feel free to just open the microphone and, and talk if you want to contribute. Yeah, I think we have several written doc, but it's yeah. also good to hear you from yeah. you. So if you want one of these yellow, pink or green, if you want to give voice to your comments. So we have the be inclusive, who, who point out to be inclusive. Hello. Maybe we are a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sorry, it was mine. Okay. <laughs> Marina. Ah, Marina. Ah, Marina. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't uh, just uh, activate my microphone. Okay. Uh, so uh, a really good point is to be inclusive, inclusive in offering the benefits. So in order not to create uh, disadvantages, uh, and uh, in order to answer to the most disadvantages uh, part of the citizens or to the most affected uh, um, actors or stakeholders. So um, in order not to be, uh, how to say, not to create a sort of uh, um, different levels of uh, uh, access uh, to, uh, to the benefits. That was just a, a point. Um, so a sort of democracy uh, for the uh, equal access to climate change adaptation. I think that's one of the, I think the, the thanks to bring the democratic issue, I think we, we have this challenge of building a more democratic city. And, and I think we have a, an opportunity here with you to the concern on, on climate change to, to give voice to everyone and to uh, give everyone the opportunity to play this role in the the role in the in the urban regeneration to address this climate change. I think that's and that's a lesson that we are also learning with young people that are playing a very active role on this on this battle. Uh, so thanks for that. So we have also the multi-level uh, integration of knowledge, systems, and bureaucracy. Um, I think this is also a very important point. Who brought this? Someone wants to talk about this integration of knowledge? Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, Hopeland here. Uh, hi. Yeah, so this is uh, mostly, um, I mean, we have people who are specialists in different topics, like one can be a biodiversity person, another can be an architect, and uh, one can be a botanist. And we frequently uh, don't have a common place where all these things interact. And therefore, when solutions are proposed, it's always proposed in isolation. Uh, so then we don't get to uh, sort of, uh, would say, integrate these things at, you know, uh, multiple levels. Uh, so, yeah, I see that as one of the problems. And uh, generally, uh, in India, most of the approaches are top down. So uh, when uh, things do happen from bottom up, uh, it's mostly, uh, you know, again, as isolated uh, incidences. Uh, so, yeah, these two I see as some of the major challenges. Thank you. I think this this is very, very in line with the inclusive issue. Also, uh, one of the things that we like to remember is the knowledge of the citizens uh, and uh, and the local, and the locals that know very well their territory. So, I think it's also very important to to include this knowledge not only from the experts but also from from the from the one that that are every day in their in their territory, uh, especially the the local associations that work there for several uh, years and, and, uh, and, and have been implementing uh, many projects. Uh, we have other, other topics more, more related with the environment, uh, land protection, uh, competition for space, which is also very interesting, namely on the, on the urban planning, how we, uh, how we guarantee the, the space for uh, nature areas, cultivation, uh, how to prevent the space of invasive alien spaces, 
uh, and also by laws and standards that are not NBS friendly very well. Who wants to bring some of these topics to, to explain better? Maybe the cultivation? Who wants to talk a little bit about the cultivation? Uh, that was me. Can you hear me well? Sean, sure. yes. Hi. Uh, yeah, Sean Goodwin here. I'm, I'm a doctoral researcher at the BC3 Center for Climate Change in the Basque Country in Bilbao. Um, yeah, I, a lot of my work is now focusing on nature-based solutions, so climate change adaptation, but more from a kind of value of nature perspective, ecosystem services on nature's contribution to people. Um, and just something that, that strikes me sometimes um, when we talk about this topic is, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Australia, I'm an outsider here in Bilbao, but I see like a lot of cities in the region, they're very cement heavy. There's not very much in terms of green spaces in, the, in an urban um, setting, but sometimes I find myself thinking, is that actually what is, are greener cities really what people even want in the first place in their surroundings or do they, is their version of a city or their idea of a good city at, a, at odds to what we think is a good idea in terms of nature-based solutions. And when you see on, on Google Maps, for example, there's a, a park label, but you go there and in fact, it's a, probably more of a square or a plaza full of cement and, and maybe the odd tree that's completely covered um, to its base in, in tiles. And, but also maybe that's just what people like. So when we you know, talk about greening cities, do, do these ideas of nature-based solutions really harmonize with how people appreciate nature in an urban context or not? And sometimes these things are uh, conflicting. So that's, that's something that I think about sometimes um, when I'm talking about this topic. Thank you, thank you, Sean. So I'm trying to group here. So we have the more related with the knowledge, more related with laws and the, the agriculture dimension. Uh, from, from laws, do someone wants to bring these uh, land protection or competition for space? Who wants to speak a little bit about this? Yeah, so that, that was me. I'm uh, Sara Musabi. I'm postdoctoral researcher in the uh, University of Libre of Brussels in Belgium. So I guess uh, the problem that we have mostly in, Bel in Brussels is that the areas that need nature the most are actually in the center of the city, which is, there is actually no space for any sort of um, you know, nature insertion. And these spaces are the most vulnerable in terms of uh, heat island effects or flooding and so on. Um, so I guess it's, uh, it comes to a question of how can we uh, implement nature-based solutions and how can we translate them on, into in, on the ground solutions basically uh, when we don't have um, you know, the, the basics which is actually the land required for nature to actually have that space to thrive and you know, become something that is actually performance, performative. So um, I guess it comes down also to, as you said, to uh, the planning issues that comes around that. So zoning and, uh, you know, um, the, uh, kind of uh, basically the, the, the layers that, for example, in urban planning, um, the regulations that are in, in place in terms of who gets the priority for development and what are the competing, uh, you know, uh, basically priorities for um, stakeholders to develop a land. Thank you, Sare. So, uh, thank you for that topic. I think it's it's very important. We know we saw some solutions related to the reuse of the building, so to implement solutions either in the walls or in the roofs, but also the concern with the public space. I think it's it's there is a big change today on what what is the public space in the in the cities, and and uh, and I think that this is a, an important topic to to highlight. Thank you. So I think maybe we should go to the next topic. Otherwise, uh, how many time do we have, Marta? Yes, we we have. I think we can afford to have like five to seven minutes maximum because after we have um, to leave the room to another session. Ah, okay. So maybe so we can wrap up. In let's this. go quickly. Okay, yeah. let's go quickly. So here we have uh, um, on how can citizens be better engaged. So we have the the co-design, co-creation, and co-implementation are strong tools. Uh, this comes from Clever Cities. Thank you. It's 
one of our uh, sister projects of Urbinat. A well-designed NBS allows the fruition uh, to discover natural elements. Of course, this is quite important. Open community workshops. Uh, um, uh, we, we have uh, several tools to engage citizens in, in these open communities. And today uh, we, we, are, um, we, we see the, the, how people uh, enjoy to participate in these community workshops. Grassroots level information and dissemination, citizens' engagement, large economic divide, uh, inequality between east and west side of cities. So maybe one, one voice, uh, someone that wants to give uh, voice to, these, uh, to one of these topics. Maybe the one who talk about grassroots level information. Yeah. Um, uh. So, Hello. Hello again. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, basically, often uh, there's a lot of traditional knowledge that you know uh, uh, decision makers don't have, and but the top top down approach, which is often uh, happening, is also uh, you know tending to miss out on this traditional knowledge that can be you know that often is nature based solution, and. Uh, there, are, there is information that is informal uh, sector that you know uh, still can sort of uh, you know uh, work with uh, local groups. So that should be a mutual exchange in that process. Uh, so that can probably uh, be what is grassroots level uh, dissemination of information. Thank you, Hopeland. We are very curious about your your <laughs> your your name is really Hopeland or it's only your nickname? Uh, no, that's actually my name. <laughs> ah, great, great. <laughs> so when, when we're born with this name, we, we have to be engaged with nature. <laughs> great. So Gonzalo, for we, the... have a, we have a question from, uh, from the public. Uh, okay. Yael is asking if you also looked into questions of behavioral change in this engagement. Uh, sorry? Uh, uh... Maybe, maybe Yael, you can explain better like what you meant okay. by your question. Yes, thank, thank you. you. No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, hello everybody. I'm, I'm not working in, in strictly in the field of uh, nature-based solutions, but I am, um, I'm working with many, many projects helping them to, um, and they're dealing with climate change adaptation and also nature-based solutions. But I saw that uh, many of them in their engagement activities with citizens, uh, when, even if they strive to change behaviors of citizens or other stakeholders, it's often very difficult, not only to change the behavior, but then also to measure it and to prove that it actually happened. Did you in your engagement activities in the project, because I, I couldn't uh, access the Miro platform, sorry. Did you have any, um, did you work also on this? Did you try to measure the change of behavior of the citizens you worked with? Yeah, from, from, from my side, in, in, in our projects, we, we, we are still implementing the solution, so we, we don't have it, uh, the, the, it will start uh, next year, the, the implementation. Uh, but uh, what we have been doing is also monitoring the process, uh, and, and this will be also the, the, the way that we will monitor and evaluate the, the implementation. So we, we believe that also the participatory uh, activities as the workshops, walkthroughs in the area, uh, um, uh, uh, the, this discussion in, in community workshops, uh, it, they will be very important to, to, to understand, not, not with uh, uh, quantitative uh, methods, but with qualitative methods, how people perceive their uh, uh, well-being and, and the, the change in the territory. And we believe this is very important because sometimes the numbers, they are quite abstract and although they, they are important to support scientifically the, the decisions, uh, it's very important to hear from the people how they perceive the change. So this, this will be mostly our uh, approach that will be more qualitative than quantitative. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> So about the good practice, we have here the paving Milan. Uh, of course, it's, it's one of the big challenges that we have today. 
integration of climate change and biodiversity concerns. NBS should also contribute to the biodiversity, of course. Um, and we have the community gardens. Uh, most of these community gardens are always a, a very important tool for activate the, the biodiversity. Uh, na natural water retention, uh, of course. Uh, and green roofs called Bando BE2. Okay, very good. So someone wants to give voice to these, one of these topics? Maybe, I don't know. Hello? The Paving Milan, maybe. Someone working on this good practice? Yeah, this is... Uh, um, no, this yeah. is the municipality of Milan and mm -hmm. uh, through its, uh, uh, what they call, Air and Climate Plan, so Piano Adi Clima, they are working on adaptation strategies. One of these are, is uh, about the paving, uh, both uh, uh, just uh, uh, taking pavementations and uh, um, regreening uh, gray areas. So there are incentives uh, and there are many projects active on that, like uh, for SME, there is a um, I mean, uh, um, sort of uh, there is a project about uh, this is a metropolitan area project about uh, planting more trees uh, in uh, gray areas or green areas in order to regenerate the land. So uh, there are many of these kind of uh, actions uh, that are uh, addressed to the, the paving activities, and we can count them in different ways. Thank you, Marina. So let's move very quickly to the last question, the related with the policies. Uh, we have already some, some contributions related to mainstreaming the adaptation to climate change in main, main challenges in metropolitan area governance uh, uh, with the Life Metro uh, that was already presented. The Piano Territoriale Metropolitano um, contains adaptation inputs uh, and NBS used for wider metropolitan area of Milano. The Piano Area and Clima and uh, e Clima uh, in Milan municipality has a, a clear guideline for climate change. Very well. So we, we see Milan very active in this. It's a very important uh, uh, showcase. Uh, we hope. Uh, the European cities learn with what Milano is doing and, and for sure all these uh, institutions, uh, either the academia, either civic society, uh, all the institutions that are supporting Milan uh, in this approach. Um, also, uh, they, they are very important to create this, uh, this common strategy, let's say. Uh, so I don't know if someone wants to bring one, one last idea about uh, policy uh, um, policies implementation. No. Or, I see or... that uh, there is a question in the chat. Maybe ah, um, Destina. I don't know if it's the right way to pronounce your name. You can like uh, intervene and um, make your your question. Because I think that the point that you are raising is very, is very important. It's very crucial. We have time for for this last question, and then we, we can wrap up. But I anticipate you that we will leave the link to the Miro open, so we can keep on in these days of the festival uh, writing information and exchanging information on the Miro board. And you can also come to visit our exhibitor booth, and we have a, a, a chat going on live, so you can. Uh, just to pop up and uh, talk to us. Uh, so I leave the floor to Destina if she wants to speak. No, okay. No, I just Hi, wanted yes. to, sorry. Hi everyone, my name is Destina. I'm based in Accra and I work with the US Forest Service International Programs. Um, it's just a quick question. I'm working in West Africa. We've often had challenges when we say inclusion. Definitely, we know when there's no inclusion, there can be equity. And so we are struggling here when we talk about inclusion. 
One, we've had challenges where the women themselves think that we are overtasking them because almost all projects, they are insisting and trying to convince projects to add women. And so they only identify the same woman, almost the same woman every time on the same pro uh, different projects in the same communities. So the women were like, we are overwhelmed. And we think with that, we are not able to really give out our best. And it's also because at home, they are already overburdened. And then the projects too are requiring that women. So you see that, well, even though with advocacy, we are beginning to see people getting women to the table at this all the level decision making and all that. But the women now are the ones in some way also resistant because they seem to be overburdened. So definitely we know that we have to empower more women so that we can have more women out there who can be, but unfortunately, it's only a few women who are assertive. And so when there are all projects, everybody go for the women, they add them just to meet donor requirements. So that's why I was just trying to know how effective has it been in your experience bringing women on board when you have some of these projects. But like you said, Woods, as the days go by, I'm sure we'll still be learning and to see how people have made this more effective than just you know, meeting requirements of donors that, yeah, women were part of it, youth were part of it. Thank you very much. Very interesting discussion. Thank you, Destina. Uh, no, I, I, I must say that uh, I, it's a very good way of putting the, 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 the question. I, I, I must say that it's the first time I heard it. Um, but uh, um, yes, we of course, we have this target group uh, uh, of women in our project. So we, we, we need to involve women, uh, not only because, uh, uh, of course, we are a, we, a social sciences based uh, project. So we work a lot with women and uh, with women inequalities, uh, but because uh, they have, in fact, a very uh, uh, strong role in the, in the communities. Uh, what we, w w our strategy, uh, I must say that it was, uh, of course, we tried to find the, the, the women uh, association that could be engaged in the project. That was possible in some cities, others not. They, they were not yet organized. But th what we thought is that maybe we could start with the children. So we start with the primary schools. Uh, so we involved uh, uh, all the primary schools of, of these neighborhoods in the cities. And with the primary schools, we achieved several target groups. So we achieved women, uh, we achieved children that we believe that are key for urban regeneration uh, uh, in, uh, with the nature-based focus. Um, and we involved uh, uh, citizens with uh, specificities because they, they, of course, they are also in the, in the schools. Uh, and the schools, they allow us to arrive to the families. So what we found is, is that uh, more than women, it's very important to dialogue with the families, with the structure of the families and, and activating the, the citizens by the schools, it allows us to involve the community as a whole uh, and not focus on uh, one specific group, uh, uh, which was which has been very productive uh, uh, for, for the project. So I, I don't know if this uh, helps a little bit. But uh, I think it creates a very interesting balance on, uh, on the involvement of the citizen. Thank you very much for, for your question. Yes, okay. th thank you very much because I think that this issue was very important to be raised and the, the, the question was posed in a very interesting way. Um, so I don't know, Gonzalo, if you want to um, uh, like close uh, this Yes, session. I think. Uh, I think we, we, we end up with a, a very stimulating yeah. uh, question uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I believe we have here a, 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 a group of ideas that in some way allow us to, to, to keep this discussion in the festival. Uh, um, I would say that we have here a very interesting balance between the social dimension, the, the environmental dimension and the, the the, the the policies dimension uh, said uh, that are that of course they need to work together uh, to to keep this uh, um, discussion about the the, the sustainability uh, of our of our cities so i would not go further i know that we have other events and i hope the discussion will continue uh, in the next event so thank you all for this interesting discussion 
Yes, and thank you very much. Words. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gonzalo, for guiding this reflection. It was very inspiring, and uh, I thank you. I thank also all the speakers that were with us today, speaking about the Lab Metro Adapt project. I remind you all that tomorrow at 10:15 we have the virtual field trip for some um, pilot interventions that we have implemented in two municipalities in the Milan metropolitan areas. And uh, we also have uh, a range of other events that uh, I talked to you about before, and I invite you to, to check. So thank you very much to all of you for staying with us until now. We exceeded a bit the time, but I think it was worth it because it was very, very interesting for, for all of us. So um, I remind you to just add your email to the form so that we can stay in touch. And um, have a great day, and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.